CataractCoach.com. You say, I'm hesitant to perform flip and chop. Well, let me address your concern and tell you why I really like this case. Complete cataract case shown start to finish. Starting off here, making our pairs and incision. You can see it's a pretty good dilation, good draping, pretty routine case. Hard to see the nuclear density now. It's a bright red reflex, but you'll see it as the nucleus comes out of the bag. Pretty typical, pretty average. Average nuclear sclerotic changes, nothing out of the ordinary. Viscoelastic going inside the eye. Very important in this case, get a good coating of the endothelium, that big wave of viscoelastic. Here comes the incision. You can use a steel or diamond keratome, whatever you desire. I'll make a single plane incision here. Now, the capsular rexus is very important. Do not try flip and chop with a four millimeter rexus. You're going to need a five to five and a half millimeter rexus. So, here, starting off, you know my forceps are marked off from the tip at two and a half and five millimeters, so I can judge the radius and the diameter respectively. Getting that rexus done. Very important, you can't do this technique without having a good rex. It has to be five or five and a half millimeters and it has to be intact. You can't have it radialized. Good looking rexes. Here's the next key, hydro dissection. And once the first fluid wave goes through, don't stop, keep injecting. So I'm looking for that first fluid wave. There it is and keep injecting, inject, inject. Nope, not enough, try again. Inject and there it is. There's the equator of the nucleus coming up. I'll kind of dig into the nucleus and get it flipped to the side. So now it's flipped out of the bag. Extra viscoelastic to, to coat that central corneal endothelium. That looks good. Now, FACO probe. High vacuum, high flow, 40 cc's a minute, about 500 millimeters of mercury vacuum. Buzz into it, chop it in half. Now I've got two halves. Each half can now just be emulsified. This is, an, this is aggressive enough of settings that you don't have to worry about like chopping it even more. And it's not that dense of a cataract. So now I'll buzz into the second half. We can bring that up as well. And that goes down pretty easily. And now we're finishing up with that. Nucleus out of the eye. One last little nuclear chip here. So it looks like it's to this, the left side of the phaco incision. And once that comes out, there it is. There's that last little piece. Now we're ready for our cortex removal. Now, there's a significant degree of cortex, but that's going to be easy enough to clean up. So flip and chop is pretty quick and pretty easy. The phaco energy is minimal. The fluidic flow is minimal. And you're operating at the iris plane. You're not up against the corneothelium. I assure you, this patient had a 100% clear cornea the next day. And we've even done studies of patients in our own clinic to measure their corneal endothelial cell count. It's really minimal, if any, change. It's no, it's no different than doing any other technique in my hands. So there's no issue there. And compared to like a resident, I assure you my endothelial cell count loss is very minimal. I'm far more delicate in the eye than a beginning surgeon. This is a very experienced surgeon, right? I've done lots and lots of these cataracts. Here comes the end of the case here. Gonna get the eye well in the, in the capsule bag. Mono, a monofocal lens, cinema piece of acrylic. I'm gonna deliver that inside the capsule bag here and just leading that inside the bag. And there it goes. Open up, let it open up in the capsule bag. Well, that's a beautiful result. And look how efficient this surgery is. You know, there's really minimal amount of post-op edema in these eyes. And the reason is because we're doing so little inside these eyes. The amount of fluid flow is very minimal. The amount of ultrasonic energy is very low. And we're even in the eye for a very minimal period of time here. We're not in the eye for a long period of time. This whole case is about four minutes. Again, it's not about speed, it's about efficiency. And you know, flip and chop really is a very efficient technique. And I encourage you to learn it, it's not difficult. And for routine cases, if they're anywhere in that two to three plus NS range for your average case, this is really gonna make you a more efficient surgeon and give your patients a beautiful outcome with a high margin of safety. So I am a fan of FACO flip and chop. And I think you ought to check it out too. Thanks for watching.